We're trying to look on the bright side as much as we could, but we could see that the language being used by those in authority over the past few days was getting progressively darker. At first, it was uh, going to be difficult to get to the miners. Then uh, it became a bleak operation. And then uh, um, also, uh, just in the last couple of uh, hours, we saw that change in mood again. And you saw the devastation on the faces, not just of the family members who you would have seen in the back of Kate's shot, but also on the face of the police and the mine officials. This has been something that they have been praying would not happen. They've been telling us for five days it was too dangerous to go in and try and rescue those men. And tragically, they've been proven right. I mean, just imagine, if you can, what it would have been if in the last couple of days or even today that some rescue operation had been launched and they were going in to the uh, mine, this may be a worse tragedy than it has already turned out to be. Let's go back now to Karen Rutherford, who is in Greymouth. And Karen, the, the, the sense of devastation has, uh, well, really only just now starting to sink in. Eric, it is immeasurable. None of us could uh, even imagine what this is like. Uh, I mean, our heart aches for these people. We've been spending a few days with them and, and they have allowed us into their lives and it is just absolutely devastating for many of them. I spoke yesterday with Nellie O'Neill, whose, uh, whose son was in the part of the rescue operation. She, she really could have lost two sons if he had gone in. So this is uh, it's a very difficult time for these families. There were many today that went to that meeting, staff of Pike River Coal Mine, who went in and said they are feeling survivor guilt. They should have been on that shift. They were due to go in. One guy missed a bus. One guy went fishing. Another had a medical appointment. They should have been in there with their mates, and they weren't. And to some extent, there are many of those gentlemen out there tonight who are feeling survivor guilt. But uh, we, can only, uh, we can only be thankful that perhaps the rescue team itself did not go in now. Karen, what is going to happen over the next few hours? What is the, is the police briefing still going to take place this evening? Eric, at this stage, uh, it has been cancelled. We are waiting to hear on that. I think for the families, they just need time now. This is their time to go away and grieve. And uh, they will also be looking, Pike River Cole mentioned to us today, John Dow, we had an interview with him, and he said to us um, there would be, at some stage, uh, and this is before we knew of this devastating second explosion, there would be a blessing up at the mine. The uh, families will be bussed, no doubt, in the next day or so up to the mine mouth, and there will be a blessing by local Māori. There will be a, a ceremony with the Pike River Mole mine people. They have uh, already started discussing that but it is not something they wanted to, uh, to start talking about publicly because at that point they didn't know exactly what was happening but now we know. You touched on uh, Superintendent Gary Knowles just before Karen who has been heading what has been an investigation and at one stage was a rescue operation and may now be a recovery operation. Uh, when he came out of the meeting with family, he had this to say, we had to break the news to the family and they were extremely distraught. I was at the mine myself when the explosion occurred. The blast was horrific, just as severe as the first blast and we are now moving into recovery mode. As you say, this is affecting not just the families of all of those miners who were trapped, but also all of the officials who've become the faces of this tragedy over the past few days. Gary Knowles, among them, Peter Whittle, the chief executive of Pike River Coal, he will also be devastated this evening. Pete, uh... Peter Whittle has many friends in there and it has been obvious over the last few days the toll that this has, this has taken on him. He has lacked so many hours of sleep. The anguish on his face, the lack of, of sleep is incredible. This man, he's standing very strong but uh, tonight he, he has learned that all 29 of those men uh, have perished in that second explosion and this is going to be tough for him. It's going to be tough for the likes of, uh, of, of Trevor Watts, the head of the mine rescue team. There are a whole crowd of them out there on the outskirts of Greymouth waiting to go in and uh, passing the time of day with cards, they uh, playing cards, talking to each other, going home, having a sleep and coming back, getting ready to go in at a moment's notice into that mine. And they are all now learning that uh, the second explosion has, has taken the lives of all their friends and their brothers, husbands, etc. 
Karen, I was looking at a list of, of the names of, of the missing men and, and where they're from, uh, from, from teenagers to, to, to middle-aged to middle -aged men. I think that the youngest, just 17. Um, the, the local school affected, we're talking about ex-students, uh, so many as well from the town of Greymouth itself. It's, it seems uh, hard to imagine how a town can recover from something like this, such a large loss of life. I am absolutely staggered that since we have been here, everywhere we have went, we have gone everywhere we have um, visited, the motels we have been staying in. Um, one woman uh, at one of the motels, uh, her son is down the mine, staying in that motel. Everywhere you look, uh, we visited other people yesterday who had a whole street in Runanga, uh, four or five, six families all living in one street. All of them had men down that mine. Imagine if you will, how they will be feeling tonight. It's, it's devastating. It is just dreadful. We, we, we heard earlier today, of course, authorities were extremely concerned about actually ever being able to reach the mine and, and reach the men uh, anyway. And now we've had the second blast. And so uh, something for, for, for relatives and, and families and authorities to ponder down the track is, are we going to be able to recover the bodies? And that's a question that was put to Peter Whittle and Superintendent Gary Knowles today at the press conference. And there was a concession from them almost that they may never recover those bodies. There is a chance that those gas levels, that carbon monoxide, that methane, that ethane, all those poisonous gases may not, in the short term, possibly ever, dissipate to a level that it is safe enough for anyone to go and, and recover bodies. And uh, that is something they will continue testing. I asked them, where do you draw the line? At what point do you make that decision to stop testing? They said they didn't want to think about that at this stage, but they did concede that, in fact, there could come a time when they may still not be able to go into that mine and recover anyone. It's just too dangerous. We're going to just step away from Karen Rutherford for the moment and go back to Kate King, who is in another part of Greymouth. And, Kate, some of the uh, family members have been walking behind you. Their devastation is painted all over their faces. I just wonder, have you been able to speak to anyone just in the last few minutes? Have you been able to get a sense of what they're feeling at the moment? I haven't been able to speak to any family members. I have been able to speak to the Greymouth Mayor, Tony Cockshorn, who described the latest news as Greymouth or the West Coast darkest day. That gives you some indication of the feeling of grief and the outpouring of emotion that is just everywhere uh, we look at the moment. I did also manage to speak to Zen Drew's father, Laurie Drew, uh, a short time ago, pretty much after the news was broken. He was devastated. He said, you know, we had been expecting a not good news for a couple of days, but we didn't expect it to come in this way. We didn't expect it to come via a second explosion at 2.37 this afternoon. They entered the media conference uh, sorry, the family briefing this afternoon, expecting to see vision from that robot that entered. And the news was looking so positive, that helmet with the glimmering light. But of course, they heard the worst news possible, and it just wasn't what they were expecting. Now, as I understand it, there is an impromptu media briefing about to begin near the council chambers uh, as we speak. Their speaking will be, of course, Superintendent Gary Knowles, as well as the Mayor, and as well as uh, Peter Whittle, the CEO of Pike River. This will be an absolutely... Uh, devastating thing for them to have to talk about. This wasn't what they wanted at all. They were ready to send in the search and rescue crews. And uh, just coming over towards me now is the father of Zen Drew. Uh, that is Laurie Drew. He's just coming to share his thoughts with us and we really thank him for coming on the show right now. And uh, obviously very hard for Mr Drew to come on our show at this very moment. But tell us how you're feeling. Well, the company's got what it wanted. They had their window of opportunity that Friday night and now the truth can't come out because no one alive will be able to come out and tell the truth what went on down there. Um, we've known right from the start it's all been PR publicity all the way through. Um, now it's just time that will prove that what we're talking about is true because coroner's reports will prove it. The only thing that's going to make matters worse is if we do find with whatever they bring out, people were alive after that first blast, there is going to be a lot of problems. What is it that they actually told you? First off, they, yeah, first <laughs> off they told us 
they were mobilising rescue. People thought it was for something else, clapped, and then they told us to hush down. Then the next month, the EC broke down himself, Peter, and I hate his job. He, I really take my hat off to that guy. And he said that there's been a massive second explosion at about 2.32 or whatever this afternoon, worse than the first one. They don't expect anyone to be alive. Um, so that I would say this time they know the gases have been burnt and gone, so they're going to go down. But the exact same thing happened Friday night. They should have done it then. Um, we still don't understand why the police handle this when in other countries and even in the Strongman disaster, the police were told to keep well back out of the way because they're public control, crowd control, other damages on other important issues which we understand but they are not mind people and they are not we, every time we ask questions they have to say well we'll have to ask someone else who, and then we'll answer next meeting that's unacceptable in today's world the person who should be there is the one that answers the questions families ask so what was the reaction from the families in that room then anger they were shouting all sorts of words to them and saying, why didn't you go in five days ago when you had your window of opportunity? And to me, it is a sole, 100% a cover-up. A cover-up in the fact that the second explosion didn't take place? No, that the second explosion's taken place and hidden all, all sign of any, any survivors that could have told the truth from the first night. And now, well, we'll never know. And they can say, oh, well, this is why we couldn't go down because we've got the methane levels. But... In saying that, Friday night there shouldn't have been methane levels simply because they it had burnt and gone up the chute, so they had a window of opportunity to at least evaluate what was going on. Have they spoken at all about recovery of bodies? That'll be happening, I suppose, today if they can get through, if the fire's not too intense. We really hope that they do get through and give us something and it's not a total collapse. So what you're really wanting now is your boy we need, back? We need a closure and we're still hoping for a miracle because we have seen the layout of the line of the mine. We know how the line of this explosion would take through the two air vents and there is still a small chance, there is pockets here, some people could survive if they were in an FOB. So Mr Drew, talk to me exactly about how you're feeling. You say the other families are feeling anger. Is that your biggest emotion at the moment? No, mine's logical and clinical and analytical. You said to me before that you weren't grieving yet, you've done a lot of that over the past couple of days. Were your hopes already low? I already knew what had taken place, but I was still on, I want a miracle to happen and I still want it to happen so that we can prove to everybody that it is concerning why no safety procedures were over heightened at that mine if they knew they had methane problems for the last two years. So obviously you're wanting a really thorough investigation following this this news? Well we know there is a thorough investigation going to go through regardless but I may be preempting things but I'm a father and, I'm, and if I have lost my son I have I will have anger but I'm controlling that and I'm being analytical so that I can talk and make sure the word's out because we've got a freedom of speech and we've got our own opinions, everybody grieves differently and at the moment now I have to go and console my mother which I hope nothing is going to happen to her but if it does then come crucifixion time down the line for that company, those guys at the top should have been down here fronting up to us not hiding behind bloody windows and sending poor Peter to do their dirty work. Talk to me about Peter. Has he been a rock no, for the families? Peter, Peter is put in the most awkward position. I don't. I've got to take my hat off to that guy and to Gary Knowles because he's doing a job and he was doing the best he could. And it'll be something he will never like to remember in his career. Both of them, Peter and Gary. And I got nothing towards him at all because I know it isn't them. It's a higher being and a higher force, and that's where the directors and everybody associated to that Pike River at the top are going to be held accountable. The Mayor described it as the West Coast's darkest day. How do you describe it? It would be exactly that. Well, thank you very much for your time, and, of course, we're very sorry for, for your loss and for everyone's families, and we appreciate you coming on to talk to us after such tra uh, tragic news. Well, we just appreciate everybody's support we have had, and the only reason negativity has been thrown at a lot of the media is because of the way the police started off and told us that this is what would be happening and a lot of people believe the police whereas I don't believe anything I just put an analytical view what I'd do if I was my son down there or what I'd do if I was in charge of a rescue team which I could competently do myself and then you just weigh up logic 
and they have not done that over the last, well, how many days has it been? And we know no more than we did Friday night. So in today's technology world, minds are supposed to be advanced, have all these sensors, technology readings, video cameras. Why weren't we showing that video footage?